Let's look at how we can run scripts or launch apps when we log in. So first we're going to open up startup application and click add, then create a name for our startup program. So let's call it launch Firefox. Next, we need to add the command that we want to run. So we can use this to trigger a script or to just enter the name of an application that we want to run. For example, I'm just going to use Firefox. And finally, we can add a comment. This is not compulsory, but it can help to put something here that describes what our entry does. So for this example, I'm just going to put launches Firefox web browser. Now that we've filled this all out, the only thing left is to click add and we're done. So to test that this all works, all we need to do is log out and log back in. And if we did everything correctly, Firefox should launch automatically. So that all worked. Let's look at where these files are stored. Let's have a look inside the file that we created and see what's in there. Okay, so the first line is the desktop entry group header followed by key value pairs. All of the key value pairs following a group header belong to the group header directly above them. The only key value pairs that are required for this to be a valid.desktop file are type and name, if the type is application. But that wouldn't be very useful for our purposes. Let's have a look at what some of these key value pairs are actually for. So type indicates that this is a desktop file for an application. Exec is the program we want to start. I think hidden is to be set to true if the program that this file refers to is removed. No display means that this file will not show up in menus. X-gnome-auto-start-enabled is used by our startup application to indicate whether or not this file is actually run when we log in. So we can have it show up in our startup application, but have it disabled, so it's ignored when we log in. In fact, if we change it to false and save this file, you'll see that the tick to the left of it in our menu will disappear. Any key within our desktop file that starts with a capital X is actually an extension of the key's specification. Then we have our name and comment keys, and as you can see, they are duplicated with local information. So you can have the values of these keys in many different languages. And finally, let's flip the no display key to true so that you can see the effect of that within our startup application menu. As you can see, it's no longer visible. You may have noticed that not all of our startup applications have .desktop files in this directory. This is because this directory is for .desktop files that are specific to our user. The other .desktop files are globally applied to all users when they log in and are in a different directory, which is slash etc slash xdg slash autostart. The format of these files is exactly the same as the .desktop file we looked at. Okay, so let's write a .desktop file manually to run a script. Let's use a simple script that just launches Nautilus. So let's start with our script first. Let's save the script and make it executable. And now let's create our desktop file. So we can use a tool called desktop-file-edit to help us do that. And it has the added bonus of calling another tool which will validate our desktop file. So we can detect any mistakes that we might make. The validation tool is called desktop-file-validate. So to start off, let's create an empty .desktop file and call it launchnautilus.desktop. Next, let's use desktop-file-edit to fill out our file. So first we will set type to application. Next, exec is going to have the value of slash home slash Linux leech slash naught script. Let's set hidden and no display to false and give it a name of launches Nautilus and x-gnome-autostart-enable to true. And finally, the file that we want to do all of this in, which is launchnautilus.desktop. And as you can see, we have an error. So it says only one desktop file can be processed at once and there is nothing in our launchnautilus.desktop file. So I think the problem 
is with our name key and it's actually the value. I think it's the space in between launches and Nautilus. So let's fix that. And we should be able to fix that with double quotes. So let's try that again. No errors this time. And if we ls, we still have our launch Nautilus desktop file and let's cat that. There we go. So you can see that all of our keys and values have been set now. And if we open up our startup application, this entry should be there. And I think the final thing that we need to do is actually log out and log in and see if our file works. But before we do that, let's just disable the Firefox one that we made previously because we don't want that to launch. So we're looking for Nautilus to launch when we log out and log back in. Okay, so it looks like the file that we created manually works as the Nautilus file browser opened as we logged in. Okay, so I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.